Hey, it's a fun student here, and today I'm going to showcase a tic-tac-toe game I made using JavaFX and Scene Builder. So first, let me just showcase the game. Very simple, we have nine buttons. Whenever I click a button, first let's see, it's my turn, so I will click the middle one, I will be X, and the button is disabled, so it's clearly defined that you can't click this one again. So, O's turn. So there, I would go there, I would say, oh, I need to do something, so I would just put it there. X would then put it there, and X1. I can then reset, let's say X, O, O start this time, O, X, O, X, O, X, X1 again, let's see if we can get O win. X, O, X, O, there we go. And the restart button at the bottom of the screen. So, let me just first showcase the JavaFX component, where I'm also secretly Scene Builder. Inside Scene Builder, I have my anchor pane first, and then I have a flow pane that allows me to distribute my buttons kinda evenly, like this. And I have just defined the size of my button, filled them in, and it would allow the flow to fit, if it fits, like in this case. I then just have some text and my restart button. All my buttons have an ID, and my restart button call, restart game on action call, and of course my text have some ID as well. So inside my controller, as mentioned, all my buttons are here with the ID. I just call them button 1 to 9. I have my text, which is called winner text, and I then have variable player turn, so I can track if it's X or O's turn. I then create an array list containing all my buttons because a lot of times I'm doing some setup and then I'm just calling setup on all the buttons. So it's preferable to have all the buttons inside an array so you can only, only need to screw the call once with for each loop like I'm doing down here. So I have my buttons, create a new array list, add all my buttons to my array list, and then call on each button using a lambda expression setup where I call the setup button method on each button and make them not focus first of all, which means they can't be like tapped around. And, and let's have a look at our setup button method down here. So simply take the button and add a set on mouse click. So whenever the button is clicked, set the player symbol to is another method that simply checks if it's player turn even. So if we can model those two equals zero, so if it's an even number, it's X's turn, set the button text to X, and change it to be an odd player turn, which in this case, if it was not even, then it's odd, then it's O's turn, and set the player number to be even. So we set the symbol using setup button, we add this to the button, so when it's clicked, it checks rather not the player turn is even or odd, then sets a symbol, we then disable the button, and we check if the game is over. And the game is over is simply a method that simply just checks nine time or eight times and we checks all the scenarios on a ticket to game. So for the top ones, one, two, three. Let me just showcase the game. So we check. If all the top ones are one, two, three, if all of these first are either XXX or O O O and X1 or one then again we check four five six so we check these 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 diagonal and so horizontal and vertical so we go through them check all the checks whenever so i add an x it checks do we have a winner not yet keep playing add something do i have a winner not yet playing da -da, da -da, da -da. We have a winner stop the game so that's simply how i check and it's simply just doing it, doing all the checks. There's no fancy way of doing it, at least not that I found. So, where, so we set up the button, the button first, add the symbol, make the button disabled, check if the game is over. That's the functionality of the button, which is added inside my initialize with a for each to all the buttons. We then also have our reset game button, which just simply takes all the buttons and call the reset button function which this is probably not even correct setup, but it makes the button not disabled and we just set the text to nothing. 
And this is actually an error. So before we were setting the winner text to text so every button. Let's just do it once. It doesn't change anything, but that's a bit cleaner. And this is more or less the main functionality of the game. So initialize, set up the buttons, have some methods to set up the buttons, have a reset game button, set up this reset game button, uh, set the player symbols, check if the game is over, and that's the game. So as you can see, it's relatively simple, and using JavaFX, we're using just plain buttons. It might not look the best, but it seems okay. And we have a functional JavaFX scene builder game. So if you enjoyed this short showcase of my version of Tic-Tac-Toe inside JavaFX and scene builder, please leave a like and subscribe, and I wish you all a wonderful day.